it's the broadcast one, isn't it? So. Right. Right. Okay, Captain Cooney from the 42. Yeah, hi, Stephen. Uh, we'll start with the big news from yesterday and the retirement of David McGoldrick. Was it much of a shock to you and how much of a blow was it to Gordon? No, it, it wasn't really a shock to me. I think I knew uh, it was always his intention to retire at the end of, end of the campaign, but, um, but I knew he... You know, he's a great guy, David. Like he's he's uh you know, a very popular member of the squad and I think I would have liked him to stay on of course because to have a positive impact on all the attacking young players who've coming through. Because we've got some really good strikers coming through and I felt he could have an impact but you know, he has he ha he has his reasons, I think uh I respect his reasons. You know, he's you know, so that's that's the way life is, and I think uh, you know he was excellent in our game against Slovakia, and uh, we, we you know we certainly wish him well. Is there a full stop after Goldrick's career now, or is he open to an SOS call? Name <laughs> you know, you'll have to ask him that. You know, you'll have to ask him that. I think uh, you know, you never know. You never know in the future. But he, he didn't give the impression either way to you. Hmm. <clears throat> No, I think he, he um it was always his intention to retire. I think for obviously he's had um you know, I think he can speak for himself, but obviously he had he had an injury with uh that he played with in Slovakia, you know, in, in in around the groin region and the abductor injury and I think it affected his training, subsequently lost his place to Sheffield United because he was you know, because his training programme was affected he hasn't started the last few games there, so I think he has. You know, he's a, he's a private man, and he has his own reasons. And I think uh, we have to respect that. And my last question is just to look ahead to the games now, Stephen. What do you think is most at stake here? And is World Cup seeding uppermost in your thoughts at all? No, I think um, uppermost in my thoughts is putting in good performances and trying to get good good results. I think. Um, can't get fixated on on the minute of uh, of World Cup seeding points. I think we've got to just focus on playing well against England, coming up playing and, and again against Wales um, on that quick Thursday Sunday turnaround, and then the game against Bulgaria, which is an important game in Dublin on the Wednesday. So three games again, great games to play in for the players, and um, I know that they're they're really looking forward to them. Okay, next question from uh, off the ball, please. Hey, Stephen, it's Nathan here. Um, just Hi, Nathan. The players you have included, Seamus Coleman is in, James McCarthy is in, both of them have had, obviously had injury problems over the last few weeks. When do you find out if they're fully fitted, do you know already that they're going to be able to link up with the squad? Yeah, no, James, James trained uh, last Thursday for the first time with the, with the squad. He's back, he'd been running with the physio previously. Back training with them uh, from from last Thursday, so uh, you know he, uh, he's certainly expected to be in the Crystal Palace squad on Saturday for the league game, and um, you know it'd be great if he got some game time in that game if if he could. Certainly, Seamus is back training, I believe, so um, with Everton so uh, today, so. Um, you know, we're delighted to have both of them in the squad. They're obviously two experienced players, a lot of quality. We've played a lot of Premier League games, a lot of international games, and James is our captain. And James is, you know, you know, played a lot of big international games, and you know, they're both both important for us. Goals have obviously been 
been an ongoing issue for a number of years at this stage for the senior men's team. But the lack of goals since he took over, I mean, David McGoldrick retiring, is, it a, is there a confidence issue, do you think, with the players that are there? There's obviously a lot of young players coming in. It's been talked about all the time. Is this something you're going to have to address when the squad comes together about the lack of goals and have you planned as how you somehow turn this round? I think really... Really, I think um, you know you have to look at the games in isolation, and I think the performance against Slovakia was was a really, <coughs> really good performance away away from home that we dominated the game. I think obviously the other games you cannot you cannot just erase the fact that eight players weren't available for COVID tracing apart from the injuries, so. That's not making excuses. You have to accept criticism if you don't score goals, and you know I'm willing to do that for sure. Um, but I do think that when you analyse the games, and I've actually we've, with me analysts through uh, chances created and scored in the in the previous window, in the previous three games, I think we've only conceded four chances over the three games. You know, there was two chances in the game. Against Slovakia, um, Darren made a save from 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 a counter attack from our own corner. I think uh, Shane Duffy cleared one uh, off the line in that game, and we didn't concede any chances against Wales at all. And and Finland, hardly anything, a couple. But we probably created, <laughs> you know, probably created 15 chances in the three games, and I think so. We're creating chances, we're playing well, we haven't taken them, and that's something we have to live with. But I have great faith in the young strikers coming through. I have a lot, you know, a lot of potential. Aaron Connolly, Adam Ida, uh, Troy Parra, who will probably be in the under-21 squad tomorrow, who is a real talent. And Callum Robinson, who I have a lot, I've really been impressed with since we started working with him. I've, you know, he's a really good player. And... Um, so um, I think another strikers, um, and um, so uh, you know I'm. It's not something I'd be uh, negative about. I'm actually quite optimistic in that regard. And well, David McGoldrick, we would have wanted him to stay on a course. We're trying to get your best players in. I would have li linked them up with Aaron Connolly, which they never got a chance to play together. You know, one of the things that opens up is that Aaron Connolly is obviously best position as centre forward and. You know, it opens up for him to play in central areas, and um, give you know, and, and that's something that we have to consider. Just one last one. Uh, it's obviously a different camp this time. You're going to base yourself over in the UK for the first couple of matches against England and Wales. The last campaign was totally dominated by COVID, and every question ended up in about COVID. Have you had a full review and rundown around the protocols, and are are things going to be quite different this time around? Are going to be changes in the way? <coughs> Yeah, I think the squad were impeccable. But listen, if anything, I've a, a huge respect for the players and the way they they managed last month. I think was, was really brilliant. Like the disappointment of losing players through close contact of false positives, and then accepting that, and then we lose players, obviously because of the COVID virus, which there's nothing you can do. You know, people can be asymptomatic, and then it. The, you know they can pass tests and then later later obviously test positive and I think um, but the four players that were ruled out through close contacts uh, for the Wales game for example late on that's a huge blow for them they were like really players who are not established who are emerging waiting for their opportunity and they've got, got a, a chance to play and they can play and it's cost them caps in their career cost them internationals and, and yet they've maintain great dignity you know they've been um, you know really really overall with what the players had to contend with in the last um, in the last window they've gone up in my estimation as people because you know their reaction has been nothing short of outstanding really as men and how they've you know they've, they've just taken everything and destroyed taken the setbacks and just really done their best get on with it and and just try to perform um, in every game, and you know, a, a huge respect for that. Damien Spellman from PA, please. 
Hi. Well, you know, I could have looked to, you know, I'm not in, I could have looked to get, like, for example, Bulgaria play Gibraltar in the first friendly. We could have looked to get um, a really lowly ranked team at home, try to get some goals under the belt and get a victory and just park that. And it parks that question from, but we didn't, we've taken on England. Does that make sense to do that? You know, are people going to go on about win game ratios and friendlies and things like that? Is that important? But I think really, I'm looking for the, the team to develop. We've taken on the England game because we don't we don't fear really anyone. We're thinking about how how can we improve? How can we improve? That's important. And I think we're thinking about let's get the you know this is a, these are good games, England and Wembley, getting ready for Wales and Cardiff. And, you know, before we play Bulgaria here. And they're good games to play in. The players are excited about playing in them. Um, we can we can improve. And it gives us an opportunity to, to improve ahead of the World Cup qualifiers in March. And definitely, um, you know, we've only played England. We've only beaten England twice in our history. 1949, 1988. None of the players were born when we beat England. None of them. Bar Darren Randolph, he's the only one. Seamus Coleman was born later that year. All right, so none of the players players were born when we beat England last 1988. So, um, so they're it's the good games, and um, we can look forward to them. Yeah, um, you're right. I can't deny that. I think he's um, a terrific guy, you know, as well. Um, and um, But listen, he's at the stage in his life, I suppose, just nearly 33. He felt that, w- that was, you know, probably the World Cup. He'll be 35, and so far he's probably looking looking at that. that, that. And... Um, you know, fair enough that, you know, you have to respect. There's a lot of factors, I'm sure, you'd have to ask him, you know. There's a lot of factors in relation to that. But he's a great guy. Played very well. was very impressed with him. I think um, he could have added to the, to the, the squad, particularly over three games like that. And, but listen, it opens up opportunities for other players. And that's the way. And we have a, we've have quite, like, there hasn't really been, like, we've spoken about having sort of one 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 player coming through in eight years, and all of a sudden, with eight players coming through in one year, you know, and that we have, you know, the three strikers and Ida, um, Connolly and Par- and Troy Parrot, you know, Jason Malumby, Jason Knight playing in the last game against Finland, and uh, Darrell O'Shea of course playing against Finland, and then the two goalkeepers in the squad, Kelleher and Travers. You know, on top of there's more to come, more players to come, you know, through, and I think. Uh, um, and we have a lot of good players in the squad and players that um, are making their mark, who are looking to make their mark, you know. And I think that's that's interesting. Okay, Guy Havel from Sky Sports and then Ed Levy and then we'll be finished. Hi Stephen, you, you spoke about the importance of the, the England game and the importance of the Wales game and the importance of the Cardiff game. Do you think it's something that you should be looking to You know, I think it's not something I'm fixated on. I think, uh, you know, I think we, we need to focus on our own performances in the three games. We need to play to the best of our ability. We want to make sure that, you know, we have a cutting edge to our play and that we continually look to improve and everything else will look after itself. You know, we can't be fixated on that. You know, I think um, we can only control what we can. So we have to play to the best of our ability. So that's not something that I'm... I'm going to dwell on. And in terms of the captaincy, with, with Seamus coming back, obviously in the last squad he was in when he was fit, Shane Duffy had the armband of, of the night. How does the dynamics of the captaincy work for this squad? 
Yeah, exactly the same. Seamus is a brilliant captain, brilliant human being, and an, an exceptional player. Matt Doherty, obviously, um, had a, poor, a real good period in the team, finishing strongly for Wolves at the end of last season in the Europa League. Had a, had a really, really good period. He got the position. Seamus responded brilliantly by absolutely being outstanding for Everton then uh, in the opening picked up an injury it's it, it's quite possible both of them would have played against Slovakia you know it's it, 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 you know had they been available I think uh, it's um, you know we've got it's good to have leadership leaders in the group Shane Duffy deputizes captain and in the three games, defensively in the three games, we were absolutely excellent. Against Slovakia, we didn't, didn't concede any chances in the three games, hardly. You know, just a couple. And I think, uh, you know, so Shane Duffy was really, really consistent in the three games, as, the, as were the whole back four. Very good at all. And uh, so Shane Duffy, you know, uh, I'm sure will be delighted to welcome Seamus Coleman back in the squad. I'm delighted to ha ha hand, the, hand the captain's arm up back to him. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, final mm. question from Ed Nehe. Stephen, how are you doing? Um, Ed, how you in doing? In terms of reflecting on the games that have been played so far under your tenure, um, do you think there's any specific type of player that, uh, that is lacking from the squad? Is it something that you're looking out for? Um, is there a potential for any, any players outside of those who are coming through the 21s that uh, may um it's it's interesting you know obviously you know we take take one of the you know i think i've got to look at it um and say right our performance against slovakia is very good overall excellent we looked like people like alan brown come on and really showed and he's having a good spell at the moment. You know, people like Callum Robinson coming on, and they're not players that were in the 21s. Callum O'Dowda, who'd been injured, came into that um, match and was very good against Slovakia. And they were all, obviously, they were three of the players ruled out as close contacts for the other two games. I would have really wanted them to play because <coughs> they're sort of trying to establish themselves as internationals, really. And I think um, they're all having decent times at club level. Callum O'Dowd has got back in the team at Bristol City. Alan Brown's captain of Preston at the moment. And Callum Robinson scored two goals against Chelsea recently in, for West Brom. So these are important players. And I think... Um, so it would be interesting to see them. I think overall we've created chances. We can 